All righty. Hey, what's up, guys? How's everybody doing? Okay. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm Brent Raymer from Tanked, and today we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about the TV show, how we got started, and then uh, after we're done, I'm going to take some questions from you guys. So in 2008, Wade and I had an office that was half the size of this stage, and five of us sat inside of the same office. And people used to come in all the time and be like, wow, you guys are so funny, you guys should be on television. And they used to come one after the next, after the next, and they would come and I'd be like, what are you doing here today? And my friend would be like, man, I had a really hard day at work and things were really just bad. So every time I have a hard day, I come here to your office and I watch you and Wade bicker with each other and it makes me smile. So I'm like, it's like therapy for you. He's like, absolutely. He goes, and it doesn't cost me a dollar. I get to come here for nothing. So people used to come all the time. You guys should be on TV. You guys should be on TV. So I kind of took it with a grain of salt. And then one day I'm watching Orange County Choppers. How many people watch Orange County Choppers before? So you know, those guys are like the pioneers of reality television. We all used to watch Orange County Choppers, but when I watched it, I was like, man, I could do that, but the bottom line is, is that that's not really how families are. Families are more like married with children. So I was like, if we could be like married with children, and those guys could turn a motorcycle into a rocket ship, we could turn an aquarium into anything, right? So I went, I came in one day and I'm like, tell my family, I'm like, guys, guys, you don't understand. I just watched this episode of Orange County Choppers where they turned a motorcycle into a rocket ship. I'm like, we could turn aquariums into rocket ships and we could be famous too. And they all looked at me and they go, that's the worst idea I ever heard. So I turned around at that point to my friend Chuck who was sitting with me and I go, Chuck, did you hear that? They just said it's the worst idea they ever heard. And I go, you know what that means? I go, that means it's the best idea we've ever had, right? I was young, you know, not too young, but I didn't really know about the television world and I didn't know how to get into reality TV. So what I did is I said, hey Chuck, let's go down to the UNLV film school, let's talk to the professor, and see what the professor says. Well, everybody knows, you know, professors are gonna guide you in the right direction. All they wanna do is teach you how to be successful. So we get the professor, we go down, we just kinda show up. We say, hey, we're here, we wanna talk to him about a reality show. He says, okay, come on in, we talk to him. And he goes, wow, you got something pretty interesting. He goes, you know what, let me come down to your facility and let me walk around and see what you guys got. So he comes to our facility, he walks around, he checks it out, and he goes, wow, you guys got something pretty cool here. He goes, but unfortunately, I can't do this as a project for my class, but I'm gonna tell you how to get it done. So he goes, you see that book right there? I go, yeah. He goes, it's the yellow pages. He goes, let your fingers do the walking, get on the phone and start calling production companies and pitching your idea. I go, oh, it's that easy? You just get on the phone, pick it up, call, they're gonna take your call and pitch your idea? He's like, just give it a try, that's what I could tell you. So I'm like, all right, this is gonna be kinda easy, right? So I get on the phone and I'm gonna show you how the first phone call went, you ready? Hello, this is uh, Brett Raymer. Uh, we have a company in Vegas, we're trying to become reality TV stars. We build the most amazing aquariums in the world. Hello? Hello? Yeah, that call didn't go too well. Matter of fact, not only did that call not go too well, nine months of phone calls. Every day I picked up the phone and dialed every day to make sure I would get it. And all of a sudden, I get this guy that comes around and he goes, hey, I'm gonna be in Vegas in a few weeks. He goes, I'm gonna come check you guys out. And when I come check you guys out, he goes, make sure you have something ready for me so I can see. I'm like, okay, I'm like, what kind of shows do you shoot? He goes, well, we shoot basically on the Velocity Channel. So I'm like, but that's car shows. He's like, yeah, but I have connections all over the place, so don't worry about it. So I'm really excited, right? And I turn around and I go back to Vegas and I tell my family, I go into the office, I'm like, hey guys, I'm like, you don't understand, a big producer's gonna come down to Vegas and he's gonna kinda check out our place and I'm super excited. So the guy finally comes down, he walks around our facility, he checks it out, I show him all the operations, I showed him everything that we do, and he turns around and he goes, okay, you got something pretty interesting here. And I'm like, uh, thank you, I appreciate that, what can we do? He goes, you know what, we can do it. We can film your pilot for your reality show. And I go, okay, great, what is it gonna take? 
He goes, well, it's going to cost you $5,000. And I said, really, $5,000? I go, well, we got a small problem. And he goes, what's that? I said, I'm $49.99 short. So he starts to laugh, and he goes, you're pretty funny. I go, but you're going to do it for me anyway, right? That's why we're going to have a successful show, because I'm really funny. He goes, okay, you got a point. I said, but wait. I go, most importantly, if you don't sell the show, I need the footage back. And he goes, so let me get this straight. He goes, I'm paying for the footage. I'm bringing my crew out here. I'm filming you guys. And then if I don't sell it, you want it back. He goes, but it doesn't work that way. I go, I understand that, but are you going to sell the show? And he goes, absolutely. So I said, if you sell the show, this paper is irrelevant. So you should just sign it anyway. So he goes, okay, you make a good point. He signs the paper. I put it away. Now remember, it took me nine months to get him to come down. That turned into a year before we actually got him to our facility. So one year goes by, he comes to our facility, he films the pilot, and he shops it. Six months, seven months, nine months, another year goes by, and he doesn't sell the show. So you gotta remember, guys, I'm really depressed, right? Because my family doesn't let you live it down, right? I used to see my friends at Costco, and I'd be like, hey, what's going on, pal? How you doing? He's like, oh my God, I ran into your dad the other day, and he said, if you worked your regular job as much as you worked on that dumb reality show, you wouldn't need a reality show. So I used to have to come into the office, and I'd be like this. I'd sneak in, and then all of a sudden I'd hear, hey, son, son, how's that reality show going? I think we saw it on TV last night. And I'm like, yeah, you're real funny, dad. He goes, I can't believe you're still working on that thing. So you know what? I figured out what the problem was, right? So we had one year of calling, one year of shopping the show, and I was so knee deep into reality TV that I was like, I'm working too hard at it. Now, I use the old adage, like, if you're going out and looking for a girlfriend or a boyfriend, that's not really when you find it. It's when you least expect it, expect it, right? So that's what I was thinking, right? Put it away, forget about it, and something good is gonna happen. So I put it away, and I forget about it. How many parents do we have here? Okay, great. So you guys want your kids to be super successful. You're gonna put them through high school. You're gonna make sure they go to college. Now, I went to college, I took political science. I was gonna be an attorney, and I came out to be a fish guy that doesn't even build aquariums. So my dad really wasn't that happy, right? But I told my dad, I said, college isn't about always getting your degree. And he goes, really, what is it about? I said, dad, it's about connections. I go, let me tell you why it's about connections, dad. I said, I've saved up all my phone numbers over the years of everybody I went to college with. And the bottom line is, is that if my roommate happens to be the president of the United States, I could possibly be vice president. So he starts to laugh at me. He's like, son, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And I'm like, dad, I'm telling you, it's not always about how smart you are. Sometimes you gotta be a little bit lucky, right? So like I said, the DVD is put away right now. And all of a sudden I get a phone call from one of my college buddies who I hadn't spoken to in forever. And he's like, hey man, what have you been up to? And I'm like, man, I've been working really hard on this reality show, but uh, I've had no success. It's been two years, zero success. He goes, well, guess what? I'm moving to Vegas. I said, great, come on down. Let me show you the show. Take a look at it. So my buddy Joel, who I went to college with, uh, I kept in touch with him all these years. By the way, Joel sold extension cords for like 25 years. That was his job, right? And so he had nothing to do with the television business. But he moved to Vegas, and I put the DVD in, and he turns around after watching it, and he goes, dude, you got a hit TV show here. And I went, yes, finally, one person. Yes. So I was super excited, right? I got one person that really believes in me. He's like, man, why don't you let me take this and send it to my friend in New York who works for Fox 5 News? I'm like, okay, let's send it to him. So we send it off to his friend Mike, Mike gets it. Mike gets on the phone, he calls me up, and he's like, hey, you got a hit TV show. And I went, two people, yes. So you gotta understand, right? I'm really excited. I got two people that are loving this show. We're making headway, guys. We went from zero to two, like overnight, right? So I'm coming into my office, I got this swagger going, you know, I think the TV show's gonna get picked up. 
So Mike turns around, he's like, look, the TV show is good, but we need to send it off to this lady I know, her name is Nancy Glass, and she needs to re-edit it, because what happened was, the original gentleman made a pilot, and most people, when you submit a reel, you submit something called a sizzle reel. A pilot's usually 30 minutes, a sizzle reel is usually 10 minutes. So how many people remember when we put my sister in the shark tank? You guys remember that? So that was at the end of this 30 minute video. So what happened was, is all these networks were watching this pilot, watching 10 minutes of it, didn't really like it, and they were turning it off. So what Nancy did is, I get a phone call from Nancy Glass, who you guys might know Nancy Glass, she was on, uh, she interviewed Jeffrey Dahmer, she was on like 60 Minutes. So Nancy calls me up and she's like, oh my God, guys, you got a hit TV show here. She goes, but we need to re-edit it and recut it. It's going to be amazing. So I'm like, okay. She goes, but first we have to sign a contract. I'm like, oh boy, here we go again, another contract. I'm like, that's fine. So we signed the contract and all of a sudden Nancy cuts up the DVD and she sends me back a 10 minute version of what the original people had created. She changed the music and I watched it and I was like, oh my God. This is the winner. This is the one that everybody's gonna love. We're gonna get picked up. So many years down the road, we wound up hearing the story of how it went inside Animal Planet. So what happened was is the disc gets sent to Animal Planet, and like I said, everything's about being at the right place at the right time sometimes and having a little bit of luck. At the same time that we were pitching an aquatic show, Animal Planet was looking for an aquatic show, but they had no idea what they were looking for. The head of market de development for Animal Planet gets the DVD, she watches it, and she runs down the hallway, and she goes, oh my God, you need to watch this right now. This is our next big hit show. So they give it to this guy, JP, JP gets it, he watches it, and he goes, oh my God, let's get those guys on the phone and let's get them to shoot a pilot. So they get us on the phone and we shoot a pilot. So during this pilot, we got Chris Angel to be part of this pilot. Well, Chris Angel had a shoot with MTV Cribs and we wound up shooting with Chris Angel all the way to the end of the episode and then MTV Cribs comes in and says, hey, we need the aquarium pumps off for two days. Well, we couldn't take catch the fish. We couldn't because of the shape of the aquarium, the where it was set, and we basically couldn't do it. So Chris Angel was like, if you don't get the tank out of my house, I'm not doing the show. So he wound up had a clause. So he, during the pilot, Chris Angel quits. So we had to revamp everything to get this pilot taken care of. So finally, we get the pilot fixed. We give Animal Planet the pilot, and they come back to us, and they go, we got some good news, and we got some bad news. The bad news is that we're not going to be airing your pilot. But the good news is we're going to sign you immediately to six episodes. So at that point in time, Animal Planet signed us, and we got a, a six-episode deal. We were the first TV show that was greenlit right off the bat. They loved the show so much, they basically didn't put it in front of any audience first. They just rolled with it. So three years after I had this crazy idea, we got signed by Animal Planet. And the crazy thing is, is I walk into my dad's office with a signed contract, signed and all, sealed and delivered, and I said, Dad, we made it, we made it. He goes, you didn't make it until the money's in the bank. And I said, okay, Dad. So we wound up making it three years later. I don't know if you guys know this, but we were in 190 countries in 35 different languages. We shot 156 episodes. At one point, we were the number one show on Animal Planet. Our goal was always to do something good for the hobby. We got a lot of flack for the show in the beginning because of the way we did things, and I'm gonna talk about that to you on how things were done here in a few minutes. But most importantly was to, I see what's gone on over the last you know, 10 years, and I feel like you know, we had something to do with the growth of the aquarium business. And that was our whole goal, was to take a hobby, make it fun, make it enjoyable, give you guys some education, and give you guys lots of laughs. So for the last, you know, 12 years, I hope that's what we did for you guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. So for that, I just want to say thank you. So I want to tell you about my experiences on the show, 
Um, you know, I've got to do some of the most amazing things in the world. I've seen so many celebrities. I've done so many different aquariums that you guys have seen. I've traveled the world. I've got to meet amazing fans like you guys. So for me, just to have that experience has been really, really super special. One of the things that I used to do is you guys see me on the show and I'm like a, a jokester, just like on the show. That's me in general. I always try to have a good sense of humor. So I would always tell Wade that one day we were going to be on Oprah's show. I'm like... Wade, we're going to be on Oprah's show. Well, we never really got a chance to be on Oprah, but we made it to Jimmy Fallon. We made it to Jay Leno. You know, so we made it on some pretty big shows, late night talk shows. It was a really big accomplishment. But Oprah was my dream. So one day, I, I would see this truck driving down the freeway, and it's got a bunch of red carpets on it. So I was always taking pictures of these red carpets and just sending them to Wade. And Wade was like, dude, what's up with the red carpets? I'm like, that's the red carpet we're going to be standing on when we meet Oprah. And he's like, dude, shut up. We are never going to meet Oprah. I'm like, okay, you'll see. We're going to meet Oprah one day. Don't you worry. Well, you guys know Oprah's part of the Discovery Network, right? She has own and she's part of the network. So I knew one day we were going to see her. Well, we get to go to all of these exclusive parties with all of the people from the network. So one day we go to this party and I see James Woods. Any James Woods fans out there? I know some of the adults might know James Woods, but the kids, but, well, James Woods is a very famous actor. He's also in Mensa, he's very smart. I meet James Woods and I'm like, oh my God, look, wait, wait, it's James Woods. He's like, go say hello. I'm like, hey, what's up James, how you doing? He goes, no, no, call me Jimmy. I'm like, all right, hey, what's up Jimmy? How you doing, it's good to see you, nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, fellas. So I leave that night, we go on to a, a, another event like a week later, and we're at the president of Discovery's house in Central Park, and I'm standing at the bar, hanging out, just drinking, and I'm standing there, we're having a drink, and we're drinking, we're drinking, we're drinking, and all of a sudden I turn around, and who's standing next to me? Oprah. I mean, right next to me at the bar, and she's talking to Tyler Perry, and I'm like, I cannot believe I'm standing next to Oprah. There is no way that I am not going to say something to Oprah. So I tap her and I'm like, hi, Oprah, I'm Brett Raymond, the fish tank guy. Hi, how you doing? She's like, oh my God, it's so nice to meet you. She grabs my hand. She's holding my hand and she turns back around and she's talking to Tyler Perry. So I'm standing there like this. <laughs> Eight minutes go by. I'm like, I'm like, what do I do? So I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna give her a squeeze and squeeze her hand a little bit and see what happens. So I give her a little squeeze and she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I forgot you were standing there. I'm like, you've been holding my hand for like an hour. And she's like, oh my God. I'm like, Oprah, you don't understand. I love you so much. I've been wanting to be on your show forever. She goes, yeah, you know it's been canceled for two years. I'm like, no, I know it's been canceled, but you don't understand. I'm like, can I have a picture? And she's like, Okay, she goes, just give me a few minutes, okay? So all of a sudden, I'm standing there, and I see James Woods again. And I'm like, wait, 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 there's Jimmy again. He's like, don't forget to call him Jimmy. He goes, but don't embarrass us. I go, dude, am I ever going to embarrass you? Never, ever, ever. Jimmy! Yo, Jimmy! I scream out. He looks at us. He stares at me, and he gives me a snarl. And he looks at me, and he cuts beeline right towards me. Looking, looking, looking. He's like, fellas, fellas, you're never going to believe it. My grandkids love you. I need pictures. So I'm taking pictures with James Woods, and uh, I kind of walk back around the party. We get a bunch of pictures, and I'm back to Oprah. And I'm like, hey, Oprah, you remember me? I, you were holding my hand for like an hour. And she's like, oh, my God, you ready for that picture? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. So I look at Wade. I look, I'm like, wait, get the camera, get the camera. So Wade looks at his camera, and he's like, I'm like, dude, I look at my camera, my battery's dead. We take our pictures all night. I'm sitting there going, oh, oh, oh. Jesus, I'm not going to get my picture with Oprah. I'm like, oh, wait, got an idea. Hold on. I'm like, you ready? Oprah, say cheese. Jimmy, picture. So James Woods took a picture of me, Wade, and Oprah, and then sent it to me. And I have that picture to this day. So my dream of meeting Oprah actually happened. So that was, that was pretty cool. So I got to meet Oprah. But we've had a lot of celebrity stories. Wade doesn't really know any celebrities. I don't know if you guys see like the sports stuff on the show and Wade has no clue. That is not fake. 
I come into the office one day, and I'm like, Wade's all excited. He's like, dude, I got a big job for us. It's some famous doctor in Beverly Hills. I'm like, who, Dr. 90210? He goes, no, Dr. Dre. I'm like, dude, that's not a doctor. He's a rapper. Another time, I come in, and he's like, I think I got a new client, but this one is my people. I'm like, what do you mean your people? He goes, yeah, I think this guy owns some kind of steak place. I'm like, really, what's his name? He goes, Kobe Bryant. I'm like, really, dude? Really? He's like, yeah, I heard Kobe. I just thought steak. I don't know. But that's all true, guys. Wade has not a clue about, you know, any athletes or, or, or just anything in general. So the TV show, most people don't realize this, but we had one hour of television show, and it's actually 43 minutes of television. So you guys see an aquarium built from the beginning. You see us go to someone's house. You see the aquarium get built. You see us set it up, install it, and you get to see it all in 43 minutes. And people go nuts because they see all the stuff that we do and they're like, how do they do this? How do they put fish in so quick? Or how do they do this? Or how do they do that? It's, well, first of all, obviously it's the magic of television, right? You know, it took us anywhere from seven to 15 days of actual filming to film one episode. So if you take that and you multiply it by 20 episodes, you'll see how many days that we had to just film, you know, the, in, on location. So we traveled about 100 days a year, and then we filmed pretty much like another 50 days out of the year in the shop. We also had a lot of biological filtration that was already pre-set up. We had vats and vats of pre-earned biological uh, media that was set for the show. So what we would do is we would prep all of the maintenance companies. We would find maintenance companies that in the state that we were at, and we would work with those companies weeks before we ever got there. We would send out fish sometimes, and they would quarantine the fish, and then the fish would get reboxed up and brought as if they were being shipped directly from the consumer. We had tanks that were set up for days, and we would come back and then shoot when the tanks were fully ready to shoot. So everything that you saw on television wasn't actually the way it happened. We filmed in reverse a lot of times. A lot of times we would film out of order, and different parts of episodes would be filmed at different times, and then they would put it all together. Nothing on the show was scripted, okay? Everything you heard come out of my mouth or Wade's mouth was, that's just who we were. We didn't want it to be scripted. Now, there were times when they would film and they would miss something, and we would have to go back and recreate what we missed. So it really wasn't scripted. They would turn around and say, you see this wood desk? We want you to get this to be black. However Wade and I made that black, that was on us. So a lot of people always ask, you know, a lot of these things did you fake, you have headaches, you had problems, you know, it made your company look bad. All those problems really happened, you know, when you're dealing with, I mean, a lot of hobbyists here, you guys know leaks happen, things happen. That's the stuff that we went through, and we don't mind showing it because everybody goes through it. We wanted to show at the end of the day how we corrected it, how we made an amazing aquarium, and how we were able to have fun doing it. That was the whole goal. The whole goal was to make the hobby enjoyable. We didn't want people, we wanted to, you to realize that it wasn't just a regular aquarium, that you could turn your aquarium into a piece of art. That was the whole goal behind creating these amazing, you know, people would watch our show and they would be like, man, I don't have any aquariums, but we love watching your show. We love to see the creativity. We love to see the education. We love to see you guys banter back and forth with each other. So everybody had a little different piece of what they enjoyed. And I think that's one of the reasons why we were so successful was because we wanted to bring that stuff to you our way. We didn't let them dictate to you what we were gonna bring to you. We were the ones that were dictating what you wanted to see. I remember when we first started, they came to me, and you guys see I make fun of Wade a lot on the show. I don't, if you notice, I never, called Wade fat on the show. I always talk about him eating, or I always talk about this, but I never call him fat on the show. The first week of filming, when we first started the show, 
the producers call me on the side and they turn around to me and they go, hey, we really need to speak to you. Can you meet us at Starbucks? And I'm like, this seems kind of odd that they're only having me come to Starbucks. I'm like, sure. I get to Starbucks, we have a meeting, we sit down and they go, you know, you're gonna have to really kind of stop with abusing Wade uh, too much. We just, I don't think that's the direction we wanna go. And I'm like, okay, I, I can respect that. I go, but you know, I created the show, I wrote it, it's my concept. This is kind of what I want to. They're like, well, you know, we really don't think that it's gonna be beneficial, et cetera, et cetera. So I turned around and I said, hey, have you guys ever watched Sanford and Son? And I know some of you kids won't know who it is, but I know some of you adults will know Sanford and Son. I said, have you guys ever watched Sanford and Son? And they're like, yeah, all the time. I said, did, Lam did Fred ever stop calling Lamont dummy? And they said, no. And I go, that's the exact reason I'm not gonna stop doing it to Wade. And they turned around and go, you know what, you got a pretty good point there. I go, great, take it, enjoy it, because that's how it is, take care. And I left. And those guys got fired, and we continued on with the show. So it just goes to show you that all I wanted to say is that we were always ourselves on the show. Um, we enjoyed being that way because we knew that that's what was going to sell. We knew that being you know, funny, being Laurel and Hardy, being Abbott and Costello, being Brett and Wade, we were going to make you smile, we were going to give you education, and we were going to bring you the most amazing aquarium you've ever seen. So. So that's really the story of you know, most of the stuff that we've done. Uh, I left the aquarium business in 2019 when the show ended. Um, I was in the aquarium business for, since 1997. And most people after 20 years, they wanna retire or move on to the next career. I just got to the point where I got really burnt out and I needed to move on. And I've now moved on and I have a bunch of other things that are happening right now. I do brand management for an amazing company called Animal Necessity. Uh, we have the owners here, they're good friends and family of mine. I also have a new product called uh, Slap It On. Uh, it's educational stickers that I'm working on. I'm doing some NFT crypto stuff. We're building digital virtual aquariums. Uh, you can see that at my booth here today too. But most importantly, um, I would love to make the TV show again. If that opportunity arises, uh, it will definitely happen. Um, I have a podcast called Going Fishing with Brett Raymer. It launches every Friday, so if you guys subscribe to my podcast, it's on Apple, Spotify. Uh, each week, it's me and Agnes. We relive uh, an episode each week. We also have had Johnny Damon on. We've had uh, Jeff Tremaine on. We have Dwight Howard in the queue. A lot of the different celebrities, you know, come on back in. Uh, eventually, we're going to have, you know, a bunch of YouTubers on, and we're going to kind of just keep it within the hobby, and kind of it'll be an update to let you guys know what I've been up to. So now's the fun part. Now's the part where I get to talk to all of you guys about all your questions. You guys get to ask questions. Uh, you guys can ask me anything that you want. Uh, favorite tank, how much they cost, behind the scenes stuff. Uh, I'm an open book. So we got a mic if you just raise your hand and you got a question, we'll start right here. Why do you use the fake coral? Why do we use fake coral? Uh, because there are so many people out there that have different thoughts of what artistic is. And artistic can be fake, it could be live, it could be planted, it just depends. There's a market for everything. So there's a huge market for fake coral, but the reason we used fake coral mostly on the show was because of time frame. So you know to make a reef tank to really make it look amazing, you need time. And you gotta have patience. I have no patience and I had no time. So the long story short is we did a couple on the show but the bottom line is, is that's why we use fake coral. And it's a lot easier to make cool stuff out of fake material. So next question. Hi, I've always been a huge fan of your show and I am very artistic myself. My family, my friends always give me like I'm a lunatic Hold just on. because I've always wanted to make my own tanks myself. What would you consider the most basic equipment to start out with? Great, that's a great question. So the most basic equipment to start out with, I try to tell people you know, to, if, if, you wanna, if you have a hang on the back filter, I try to tell people that you should, you can use a hang on the back filter, but use it in conjunction with a canister. Um, if you, to me, a canister and a hang on the back is gonna get you where you need to be for basic filtration. It's pretty easy, pretty simple to work with. Um, I've used them on many aquariums, you know, 
wet dries over the last maybe 20 plus years have become really popular, you know, different kinds of biomedia. But I personally, like I said, any aquarium I get, I wouldn't go with a hang on filter. I would use it in conjunction with something else. Are you still in contact with Wade? So I speak to Wade once in a while. When I left, uh, when I left ATM, I needed to separate myself from the family completely. Uh, 25 years of working with your family every day. It felt like 12 days a week, if that makes any sense. But it was just tough for me, and I needed to get out. And it was the best thing I ever did was to leave uh, ATM. Not in a bad way, but for me personally, I just had enough. You know, I created something really special, and when it went away, I kind of felt like that was my time. And uh, I took a break, and now I'm, like I said, I'm back in the, in, I'm doing things that I love. That's what's most importantly. Uh, if you guys make it to Vegas, uh, I'm opening a restaurant tomorrow. Uh, it's a New York style Italian deli. Uh, all the walls aligned with all the memorabilia that I collected from the TV show. So you can come in, we have a fish tank in there as well. So I'm doing things that I really enjoy. You know, I, I do brand management, I do video content, uh, I, I work with people, I'm still doing some things in the fish game, so it just enables me to spend more time with my family and friends. You know, as you get older, those are the things that you want to do, spend with your family, so. Um, you had a Lifestyles and Fish and Famous YouTube? Was, I do. Was, was there a lot shot with that, episodes-wise? So I have a Lifestyles of the Fish and Famous YouTube. Um, I was going to shoot a TV show after Tank End, and it was called, the original name of the pilot was Lifestyles of the Fish and Famous. Um, but they wanted to use Tank because otherwise they would have had to lease that from me and pay me money for it. So they wound up calling it Tank. Um, but I do have a, my podcast, like I said, is on Lifestyles of the Fish and Famous. I have some uh, new training system that I'm gonna, I built. I, over the pandemic, I built an interactive aquarium maintenance training program where it's gonna be me teaching people how to maintain their aquariums properly. Um, we'll get clips of that. It'll be on Lifestyles of the Fish and Famous, but uh, that is my YouTube channel, and uh, hopefully we'll start seeing some more videos and start seeing some more stuff on there. Okay, so I have a few questions. What was your most expensive and least expensive tank? Most expensive? Yeah. So the most expensive aquarium that we built was a church in Dallas, Texas. Uh, it's called IBOC. It was on the show. It's where we lowered the, Wade lowered, dove the tank and lowered the cross. So we did that tank about 15, maybe plus years ago, and that tank was four and a half million dollars. Oh, wow. That's yeah, you know the church got more money than God. So they have a 10,000 seat congregation. Um, they have a full in-house staff to take care of their aquarium. And uh, they, they have their slogan above it that says, uh, I think we make fishers of men or it's something in the Bible. I'm not really very religious. But at the end of the day, they feel like everybody, their slogan is everybody's equal just like fish are equal in the ocean. They all swim, we all need to swim together and be harmoniously in, on this planet. Do you ever build tanks for family members or anything? Do I ever build tanks for family members? For family members. You want to be my son? I could sure. build you something then. Uh, you know what? I take care of everybody. You know, at this point, I don't build tanks anymore. I never really built tanks. I had somebody build them for me. But at the end of the day, we always take care of our people no matter what. If you're my family, you're taken care of regardless. OK, thank you. All right. Anybody else? We got someone in the back. What's your favorite freshwater fish and saltwater fish? So my favorite saltwater fish is a clown trigger. Um, I love the clown trigger because I love the beautiful colors, but I also it's, it's, it's a very aggressive fish, and it could be. Uh, it's kind of like me. I'm like kind of funny, but I could also be aggressive. So I like the clown trigger. Uh, as far as freshwater fish, I'm a cichlid guy. I like the colors, you know. I just like that they're really hardy, they're easy to take care of, and uh, they also could be aggressive. So I like cichlids for sure. Anybody else? Questions? Questions? What was your favorite prank on the show? My favorite prank on the show. So that's, that's a great one. So you guys saw the hot sauce prank, right? And the hot sauce when I got weighed with the hot sauce and I, get, I put the hot sauce. So that was, that was one of my favorites. But the best one was is when we got my dad. So we filled the air conditioning vents of his car with talcum powder. And then we told my dad that we were going on a, that he had a big appointment that he needed to go on. Now, the great thing about the pranks were 
nobody, everybody knew what was going on except for the person that was getting pranked. So my dad thinks he's get, he got his nice suit on, his three-piece, and he basically went out and turned the air conditioning on, and it blew the white powder all over him. That was one of my favorites. Uh, when we put Redneck in the desert, that was one of my favorites. I mean, we, we, we had a lot of fun. So all, all the pranks that we did on the show were all real. Nothing was staged. I don't know if you guys remember the pinball episode um, when I had the glass and I broke the glass. So that glass happened to be tempered. They come to me and they tell me, hey, you need to break this glass. No one knows. I'm like, all right, not a problem. So I go and I get the glass and I'm like, oh, and the glass doesn't break. And I'm standing there and I'm like, oh, Frank's over. That's it, it didn't work. But if you notice in the episode, I actually picked it back up and I had to actually like almost throw it down. You can see it in the episode. I almost had to throw it down to get it to break. So like I said, those have been some of my favorite pranks. Anybody else? Any questions? How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing well. And you? Awesome. I'm doing great. I wanted to ask you how you mentioned about Redneck. How, how is he doing and what's he doing now? Redneck. Redneck's yes. doing well. So Redneck is actually working right now at Johnny Walker RV, where our aquarium was. He, got, he loved that place so much, he got a job there. I'm dead serious. So he works there. He's like the head mechanic right now, and he works there. I spoke to him the other day. What we wanted to do is if you guys check out my podcast, I'm going to do a, we're going to come up on Redneck while he's at work at Johnny Walker's. We're going to talk to the people there and tell them that we're there to do an episode of my podcast in front of the aquarium. And then we're going to go in the back and we're going to be like, Red, we're going to catch him live and see what he does. So you're going to see that really soon in the next couple of episodes. All right. Who else we got? Questions? Questions over here? All right. Who was your favorite celebrity to work with? Oh, man, that's a really good question. So... I would say my favorite top celebrities are, I have a few, so, and not in any specific order. Uh, so Shaq is one of them. Um, I still stay in touch with Shaq. It's pretty funny. About a year ago, I'm sleeping at five o'clock in the morning, my phone rings, and I look at the phone and I'm like, oh, it's a block number, I wonder who this is. So I pick up the phone and all I hear is, yo, what's up, big dog? I'm like, Shaq? He's like, yeah, man. He goes, I need a favor. He goes, I got this kid that really loves you. Their family's staying at the Wynn. I need you to go and hang out with the family for a bit. I'll owe you one. I'm like, yeah, no problem. So I went down there, met the kid, met the family, took my girlfriend. We hung out, went to a North Carolina basketball game with the kid. So Shaq and I, he comes to Vegas. He gives me a call. Marshawn Lynch, I get a call. Every once in a while, I get a call from Steven Tyler. Uh, you know, we did, a, we did some work for him, but not on the TV show. Uh, Tracy Morgan, still one of, one of my favorites. But one of my good friends that I actually became good friends with is Johnny Damon. Uh, he lives here in Orlando. Uh, Johnny, good friend of mine, uh, you know, been to his house afterwards, hung out with him. But a lot of these guys, like I said, they, they're, they're all pretty cool. There was only a couple that I just really didn't care for. But for the most part, everybody that we met on the show was, was, was pretty, pretty grateful. It was pretty fun. Anybody else? Questions? Questions? This is my daughter, Kayla. You guys remember the episode, the Trades Wins episode that we did? And I had the Sweet 16 for my now 23 and a half year old daughter. What's up, Kayla? What was your least favorite episode to shoot? So my least favorite episode uh, was probably Chris Angel because of what he did. You know, I did, if I ever see that dude, I think I'm going to make him disappear. No, you know, honestly, I think my least favorite episode might have been John Wall, the episode with John Wall. John didn't really hang out with us much. All, all the celebrities really got excited when they, we came to their house. Most of them were big fans. I don't know what John had a bad day or not, but he just really wasn't into hanging out, you know? So I would say probably, you know, John Wall was probably one of them. I don't know if you guys saw the episode uh, where Wade and I went to Dubai. Um, if you hadn't seen that, look it up. It's called uh, Fish Out of Water, Brett and Wade in Dubai. So I know when we really made it is when we were filming. I had never been to Dubai before, and I was like, wow, this is going to be an amazing experience. We got to go to Atlantis. We got to swim inside the big aquarium. In Dubai, we were, we're filming inside the Atlantis, and while we're filming, there was two men that happened to be from Dubai, and they're fully dressed up, you know, in the, in the Dubai clothing. They have the turbans on, and we're kind of filming, and they see us filming, and right in the middle of filming, the one guy looks, and he sees us, and he sees me, and he sees Wade, and he comes walking over right in the middle of the set, doesn't stop, sees the cameras, 
And he goes, oh, my God, I love you too, guys. You guys are so amazing. He goes, you, you're the funniest guy. You make fun of this guy like I've never seen before. You guys are so crazy. I can't believe I'm seeing you. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. I looked at Wade, and I go, dude, we made it, bro. We're in Dubai. We're getting hugs. We made it. So that was amazing. Then we went to a panda park in China. There's a, a, a school from Norway that was doing, that was singing. They were actually on stage singing, performing at the panda park, and they were practicing. All of a sudden, we're like from here to that wall. That's how far away we are. We're at the wall, and they're over here on stage, and they're singing. And one of the kids on stage notices me and Wade. He's, I hear them talking. They're talking. We're watching. We're watching. They all start coming like towards us. And I'm looking like, I'm looking behind me like, where are these kids coming? It's like 40 of them. And they're like, they, they couldn't, they didn't speak much English. They had one of the teachers tell us that they can't believe that they traveled from Norway to China to see Brett and Wade on their favorite show in, in Norway. So that was pretty exciting, you know, to go to a panda park in another country and then see kids from another country come to us and tell us how much they loved our show. That was something special for us. It was really, really exciting. So any other questions? Anybody else? Any last thoughts? All right, I guess not. All right, guys, so look, I just want to say thank you once again. Without you guys, I wouldn't have a TV show. So for that, I really want to thank you guys for watching over all the years. Uh, you know the reruns are still on. They run all the time. Uh, please check out my podcast. It's called Going Fishing with Brett Raymer. If you miss us, you will get a dose of me and Agnes every week. We relive each one of our episodes. Like I said, we bring in our celebrity guests. Uh, and if you guys want to know what else I've been up to, just come visit me in my booth right in front of the YouTube stage. Uh, come say hello. We can take some photos, sign some autographs, whatever you guys want. But once again, thank you very much for giving me 10 years of amazing stuff. Thank you.